This week on is Bart Walsh, Head of Fitness for Jets Australia. How are you, mate? Mate, I am pumped. I tell you what, people are going to love this story. You're a man on a mission. Thanks, mate. I'm, I'm very excited to tell it. Let's go get it. Welcome to the Body Science Podcast, bringing you everything you need, want, and should know about health, fitness, nutrition, and training. As always, the information contained in this podcast is for the information purposes only and is not designed to diagnose or be prescriptive to treat, prevent, or manage any injury, disease, or other health-related condition. Today's podcast is brought to you by the revolutionary new Hydroxy Burn Sleep RX. This natural therapeutic sleep formula is unlike any other, designed specifically to combat the negative impacts of poor sleep on the mind and body without the common side effects associated with other sleep aids. It combines innovative and clinically researched German ingredients Recoverben and Blue Ness with other safe proven herbs to calm the mind and soothe the nerves, helping you sleep better. How? Via lower levels of stress and anxiety and reduced muscle pain, improving your recovery time and enhancing mood. Sleep better. Welcome to Body Science HQ, the world of fit, happy, healthy, and we're going to put at the end of that this week, massive change. Here's a man that's running fitness for one of the biggest brands in Australia, like Jets. Mm -hmm. Great brand. Oh, incredible brand. How long have you been with them for? Mate, it hasn't been long. It's been about six months, yeah. to be honest. Like I've always, you know, being a, a typical gym rat, very young, <laughs> you, you always know what the big boys are. <laughs> Jets uh, has always been in and around my locale, but I never really understood what it meant to be a Jets member or what it meant to be a Jets uh, staff member. And can we touch on that? What does it mean to be a Jets staff member? Because there's probably a lot of people out there going, oh, Jets is just a 24-hour McDonald's version of fitness. Like, man, I've heard that before. Yeah, I, like, oh, there's nothing new there. Like, before we go on, mate, yeah. I have to, I've, I've made a blue, I've made, I've made a big blue. Mm. Uh, within Jets, we have these things called burpee words. Burpee words? I don't have too many burpees personally. Uh, mate, I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple for you <laughs> at the end of this one, but my, my boss is going to kill me for this. But S-T-A-F-F-M-E-M-B-E-R is a, oh, is a, no -no. Is a burpee word. Yeah. So I'll clock I can that. wait. I've got a it. minute. Let's go. <laughs> All right, hit me. Down you go. It's a burpee word. Yes. Uh, What's a burpee word? Mate, there's a, <laughs> there's a few within the Jets network. Like, for example, we don't use the word C-L-A-S-S -S when we're talking to a, uh, yep. a session or a workout. It is a yep. session or it is a workout. But even just like the change of nomenclature within the company says a lot about Jets and says a lot about the culture. And the best thing is, is that the burpee word principle spans PTs, it spans club managers, uh, it spans the finance team or the Everyone. finance team. So, so uh, hopefully I didn't, uh, I didn't bruise too many of you guys by saying that at the start, but there you go, mate. Well, if you stuff up again, we'll do one together. Thanks, mate. <laughs> so I'm onto yeah. those words now. I'll be stopping those. <laughs> there's a, and there's a few. There might, might be a few that pop up. Before we talk about you and your story uh -huh. is amazing. Like everyone here has been buzzed about you coming in to chat to us, like mm -hmm. just from the, the bios and, and Joel talking with mm -hmm. you and the things that are happening. And you're a real you're a real change maker. Like what you're doing at Jets is amazing. Like, mm -hmm. You can see the difference from our point of view, like dealing with the brand itself. I mean, I'm not saying that in a negative way because, you know, I love what what Jet stands for, mm -hmm. and I think it's really important for people like you who are new to the brand, but they've brought you in for a specific reason. Do you want to tell like the fitness world mm -hmm. why they should join a Jets and why a Jets is different to something else? Like what is like that burpee word that really yeah. got me? Then I won't be saying that all day. <laughs> <laughs> team member, team member. Jets started from very humble beginnings, and I think there's something very humanely intriguing about that, especially with the state of the industry at the moment. I mean, things are getting more technologically advanced. Things are getting less this conversational. And Jets started in 2007 from a couple of brilliant minds, Christy and Brendan Levinson, and uh, their ethos was they wanted to make a gym that was all about the member. So they said no locking contracts, open 24/7, and in the market back then, 24/7 was not as popular as it is now and they made the the experience all about that person and the whole idea of real people and real results really resonates with me and man you can feel it i've i've been in a lot of gyms a lot of brands uh, a lot of countries every gym has its own feel and its own culture something you can walk into that door and you can go there is no heart you them. can feel a place when you walk yeah, into it, can't you? you can and every time i walk into a, a jets gym and keep in mind here these are different business owners 
same business. Every time I walk into one, the feel and the culture that, that, that emanates in every member is something really special. And we've, we've, we've never been one to, to really target the heavy bodybuilding crowd, or the heavy powerlifting crowd or, or anything like that. We're, we're humble in the sense that we want to affect real people. And that says a lot, you know, about our mission. Our mission previous to last year, it's changed in the last sort of five months, uh, was to become Australia's most loved gym. And okay, so that's the mission. It was, it was, and mate, we think we've made it there. Yeah, probably. It's a very hard thing to say. It's black and white, and so we've rejigged and we've looked inside ourselves and said, "All right, well, what's what's next?" Uh, and it's to become the world's most loved gym, but not just the world's most loved gym, the world's most loved training gym. And that word is really important, and it's really important to me. And it's part of the reason why uh, I've come on board. We understand that we're we're very convenient. We're open twenty four seven. You can come in anytime. You can be a shift worker, and you can come in whenever you want and do your workout with some pretty good pieces of equipment yep. but then the market's changing if if you're in it you can feel it and if you're not changing yourself you're, you're doing yourself a disservice and at the moment what people need and it's not what the market needs it's what humanity needs isn't just sets and reps we need to know that the link between nutrition the link between the mind and mental and mental health wellness and exercise and how all these beautiful things all link up together to create what we want at the end of the day most people want to lose lose a bit of fat, gain a bit of muscle. But the training gym ethos and the training gym philosophy sort of spans that. And it goes, okay, well, we do know we want you want to lose a bit of weight. How well do you sleep? What are your stress levels like? How can we dig into that deeper to make sure that when we do the sets and reps, we can make sure that the most efficient sets and reps they can be? And I think, and you know, I'm I'm partially responsible for this as well. Uh, being a part of the industry, is we've we've lost that sense a little bit. And I like to think of everything, and this I don't know this something says something about my personality or whatever, just the way I think about things. But everything's on on a spectrum. It's like a pendulum as well. And on one end of the pendulum, you have entities and exercise styles that. Uh, are all about happiness and fun, and let's let's uh, let's let's bash a balloon around for an hour and call it an exercise session. Um, and on the other hand, you've got perfectly balanced biomechanics and perfectly executed squats and very rigid personalities and very a very cold feel to it. And it seems like, and this is a, a personal perception, I should say here, is that a lot of entities are either on one end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And it's been a real passion of mine and a real intrigue of mine to find a way to get that pendulum right in the middle. And being able to have the emotional intelligence and being able to have those times of fun, doing that little dance, you know, making yourself vulnerable, but also knowing a hell of a lot about fitness is something that I've, I've been working towards for a very long time and something that I want to tell the entire Jets network about because I know uh, I'm only one person. I know the biggest impact I can have on the industry is to help all the trainers within the gym so to get that pendulum back in the middle is front and foremost my goal and, and my mission and then that feeds perfectly and aligns perfectly well with the Jets vision to make the world's most love training gym it's I love that mate yes it, it's bloody brave and, and I truly truly do love that hi team it's Bart the head trainer for Jets Australia here just a reminder our eight-week challenge happens on February 3rd we've got some incredible workouts coming your way some habit changing nutrition transform your body mind and life alongside real people and go in the chance to win a trip for two to hawaii the challenge starts february 3rd jump on our website and register now jets.com.au slash eight dash week dash challenge i'll see you in the gym you touched on a couple of things when we were talking and you thought you used the word humanity and vulnerable. Mm. And like, I think it's a good time now to step in and let's talk about you a little bit. Do you want to tell people your story? Because I'm not even going to try and introduce it. I'm going to sit <laughs> back and listen to it again and be inspired. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm very lucky in the sense that I have a perception of, of life and its events that's very different to a lot of other people. What, what I've been through, and I think it's, it's good to put a bit of context in this before I tell the story. It's uh, I'm very grateful for what's happened to me purely because I am an entirely different person for the better. But when, I was, when I was a bit younger, I'm 28 now, when I was 23, got diagnosed with two things. I suppose it's good to note as well, I, I trained as an actor, which is a really interesting thing, especially in the States, the, the parallel between fitness trainer and actor is quite, quite strong and okay. interchangeable. But so I was doing the rounds on the acting work, you know, I had a few, a few gigs on Neighbours and the Dr. Blake Mysteries, a few ABC shows and a few TAC campaigns, stuff like that. I was working with a, a youth non-for-profit organization based in Brisbane called Wiley. 
and do a wonderful job. And we just finished one of their conferences. I was a volunteer for. I felt a lump below my jaw, and I saw I saw nothing of it. I thought it was just some sort of glandular, like a big lump, a little lump. It was little, about the size of a marble. And I previously knew I had a lump behind my teeth, but they said it was benign. It's just it's just there. And so I went and got it figured out. Went to a doctor. I said, "What's going on?" And he says, "Not sure." So they do a bit of research, and within the space of about two weeks, it probably quadrupled in size. So it grew very fast. Had the biopsy. One doctor wanted to cut it out straight away without knowing what it was. Thankfully, he didn't. Um, otherwise, I could be in a much uh, much worse position, I suppose. Got the biopsy uh, and got diagnosed with two things. One's a condition called neurofibromatosis, and the other one was uh, a, a peripheral nerve sheath tumor as a result of the neurofibromatosis. So I grew a lump on my nerves, which is a part of the condition, and then from that, a cancer grows. And uh, luckily for me, it's a, it's a very aggressive type of cancer, and it proliferates and grows very fast. So in the space of it must have been six to eight weeks, it grew to the size of a baseball. So 10.2 no. centimeters, yeah, right on the side of my jaw. I was very blasé about it, thinking that it was just something. So I got the biopsy, got the diagnosis, and then the call to action was, well, we have to cut it out. And then the- We're talking a baseball now, aren't we? Yeah, it's, it's a big boy. Yeah, see, it's not like you can hide that. Beard looked really funny, though, when I grew his hair over it, but that's, that's another story. <laughs> So we had to cut it out. And the question was, do we do radiation therapy before or do we do it after? And so they decided to do it after. The success rates were apparently much more prevalent if you, if you cut it out first. But the, the surgery was quite intricate. So they had to take out my right jaw and with that, uh, the, the floor of my mouth, a uh, third of my tongue, a little bit of my throat and all my teeth. Can you just go over that again? Because I don't think people actually understood what you just said. So they did. So they cut out my jaw. Your jaw. So if you, if you were to place your finger right in the middle of the, the bum crease of your jaw. Yeah. They took out 10, whole 10 centimeters just below the joint. And, and then you said your tongue? Yes. So they took out a third of my tongue. So the way the the way the, the way they do surgeries with, with cancers is they can't just cut out the direct <coughs> gross. They have to take a circumference or a diameter around just to make sure they get all the cells. Because the issue happens with surgery and cancer is if you cut it out and you don't get all the cells, all of a sudden you've got these really random cells still within your body that can grow. Right. So they need to make sure they got so the whole lot. Jaw, tongue, roof of your mouth, did you say? Uh, floor of my mouth. Floor of your mouth. And uh, a little bit of my throat. So, I mean, salivary glands as well, all gone. And it's really funny. My so first, you were 23 when this is 23? Uh, 23. 23? Correct. What were you thinking? Like, what was the mindset then? Because you obviously said I was blasé about a, bar, yeah. a, a baseball on the side of my head, so yeah. you were pretty cool to then. Like, But once someone starts telling you, we're going to cut this, we're, mm. like, a young man, mm. you're going to lose your jaw, you're going to lose your tongue, so mm. you're thinking, geez, I'm not going to sound the same, I'm mm. not going to look the same. I mean, you're an amazing human. What did you do at 23 that none of us had? Like, what was it? I was, you know, to be honest, I was very angry. Yeah. And to be even more honest, I don't remember much of it. The mind is a wonderful thing, and I've, I know I've repressed uh, a, lot, a lot of feelings from back then. But the, the main frustration came from training three years as an actor and doing voice classes every day, two or three hours a day, lying on the floor, articulating and finding your resonance and that sort of stuff. And having built up a certain proficiency with the way I sounded, all of a sudden that was going to be taken away from me. And as a budding actor and a, a budding fitness professional, that just made me very angry. Uh, yes in a word, but I pride myself on my optimism and I'm not sure whether my optimism is a result of this situation or whether I've had it beforehand, but you know, there was no point where I, where I looked back because that just seemed inefficient. I've always been one to work really well within my limitations and find ways to do things better with things that, are, that I can do rather than things I can't. I'm not a complainer. And again, I don't know if, if that's a result of what happened or, or not, but the, more, the most frustrating thing was, I don't think I've even told Jane this, my partner. She um, for about two days, they said they were going to have to take my voice box as a part of the the, um, the diameter. And so I started I started writing. And so I started writing what are going to be my last words, you know, what, what I want the last verbal verbal things to come out of my mouth to be. And I can't, I can't remember them. I threw out that notebook pretty fast after, after they said, we don't need to take your voice box. So there was about five days where I didn't sleep. So I got, got, got diagnosed, got told of the operation, got told we might need to take your voice box. And the way the operation works is well as they replace all the tissue they take away with other tissue from my body. So they're going to use my left fibula uh, as my jaw and they're going to take tissue from my left quad to fill the floor of my mouth and then a few skin grafts from the quad as well. So, so there's two sort of things that are really frustrating. One was the voice thing, I'm going to lose all that and the other was the doctor said I'd never be able to run again and that was really frustrating and the, the, the thought of that, the thought of the, the missing the freedom of running is heartbreaking. 
So there was about five days there where I didn't sleep and it was, it was very difficult because I thought that the cancer would grow so fast within those five days that I might not make it to the surgery. So I was I was in a, a world of, of mental anguish, I suppose. And so the surgery came. It was at St. Vincent in Melbourne. Wonderful people, wonderful staff, wonderful nurses. I gained a, an appreciation for, for nurses like no other. Shout um, out to all the nurses in yes, Australia too. Yes, they're doing, they're doing wonderful jobs. The night before my operation, I had my last meal because I knew not my last ever meal but I knew for the, the three months after I'd been on a liquid diet so I had a Big Mac arguably oh. one of the worst decisions I think I could I could ever make mum brought it into the hospital because they wanted to feed me hospital food and mum wanted me to have a have a good meal before before I went into the operation I had a Big Mac felt awful the, the next morning but I don't remember the, the operation went for 16 hours 16 hours a very long time I, I couldn't remember a thing of it obviously but I woke up and the day after I think I woke up at about 3 3 3 p.m. So you could say there's, you know, four hours before bedtime. And those four hours were just the longest four hours of my life. I wanted to get to bedtime so I could go to sleep, so I could just forget about everything. And I was so chemically enhanced with painkillers and blood thickeners and all this sort of stuff that every minute felt like an hour. So I was looking at a clock, couldn't speak. You know, I had a, a tube in my nose. I was breathing through a tube in my neck. And every minute just felt so long. Got to bed that night. I spent the next three months in hospital with which is a, a fascinating time. Hospital. Yeah, it's, uh, it might actually might be a little bit less. So it might have been two months uh, and then in and out for, for a month after that. And like, the visual of this is, is quite interesting. So breathing through a hole in your neck, you're, you're eating through a tube in your nose. You've got a big cast on the entire left side of your body because they've taken tissue from your quad. They've taken your fibula and, and you can't move. And so I, I'm not sure whether it's a, a symptom of the condition or not, the nervous system condition, but I was just so itchy all of the time. I'm sure, I assume the, the chemicals have something to do with it as well. And so it was then I started sort of understanding that this this thing that our soul is draped over, or, our, or the thing that drapes over our soul, our, our being, our... Um, our tangible senses, our body is just the most adaptive and wonderful thing ever to the point where we don't even know how all of it works yet. Mm, and, and, okay. and, and that's fascinating. So these, these two months, I got to see body heal in real time. I had to do a speech therapy. So I had to learn to, to swallow again and to talk again and I had to wean myself off breathing through the tube in my neck. And it was as hard as it was and as difficult as it was, the, the feeling of progression felt so much better, I suppose. And it made me feel a lot better as well. And as soon as I could get out of the hospital and go for walks, that helped a lot as well. There's is a funny story. They give you a morphine button, so you can press the button whenever you want, and it shoots yeah. morphine in there. And apparently, it's, um, it taps out every five minutes. And so one night, I slept on it, unbeknowingly. So every five minutes, I was getting a, <laughs> a shot of morphine, and I had the most vivid and sensory dreams of, of ever had me and my mates were, were selling drugs in pies at university. It was it was nuts. And I woke up and the, the curtains around the bed were moving and the nurse didn't believe me. I was like, no, nah, they're moving, they're moving. And so they figured out what happened. I was on the morphine button. But it's, it's little things like that that I remember. And often it's the painful things that I don't. Like I remember there was, there was a code blue at one time. So a blood clot got stuck in my breathing tube. And so I, I couldn't breathe. And so they had to, and this is like for all the guys out there that have chest hair, they'll understand. They had to, they had to, to rip out sutures from from my chest where the tube was and ripped the tube out and the tube was kind of congealed with this this healing liquid that, that, that this pussy stuff that was stuck in my chest here and it was, that was just the most painful thing ever and I didn't remember it until until last week I totally forgot about it and so I'm still fascinated about how the mind works and what it forgets. So they pulled the tube out that was they Your did. oxygen supply. <laughs> Absolutely. And so, so obviously it tried to heal around the tube. That's Absolutely. And that, that was probably one of the most painful parts, most definitely, uh, of, of the recovery. But it's, it's just, it's, it's funny what the things you remember and, and the things you don't. And again, there's just a, an utter respect to how the body's uh, quest for survival, you know, lingering on the things and repressing things this way of saying you don't need to worry about that. That's done. Uh, and it just blanks it from, from your memory, you know. And uh, so the story sort of doesn't end there. I went through my rehab, had my speech therapy, went through a bit of uh, physical therapy to learn to walk again. They took my fibula and for those in the fitness industry, they know that the fibula is just a load-bearing bone. It yeah. doesn't, doesn't do jack. But learning how to sort of coordinate the nerves, because when they did take it out, they, they had to cut some tendons and cut some nerves. So part of my condition is that uh, I can't really feel below my knee. That's just a part of the nervous system condition. So I've got these really, really stick thing legs, which is a really funny thing to have in the fitness industry, especially when when, when you can out-squat the people with, with real legs. <laughs> so I had to learn to walk a little bit again. But 
but for the years following, uh, I had a host of infections, a very rare infection called actinomyces, which grows very specifically in the jaw and it's very slow growing and you can't get rid of it. You have to either, you have to cut it out or spend or the rest of your out. life, yeah, oh, and wow. antibiotics all the, your entire life. So do it your choice. Thankfully, they did cut out a bit of the metal work to get it out. So, so you had more jaw work done again? Yeah, quite a bit. So after the operation, uh, the jaw looked like something from the Terminator and the infection sort of spread from one bit of the jaw, one bit of the metal work to the next. So they had to keep taking these bits out. Thankfully, I was young and the healing properties when you're young are a lot better than if you're, you know, 60 or 70. So the jaw healed quite well, but a lot of the metal work has been taken out purely because it's, it's been infected and how that happens, uh, it's very hard to tell. So sort of in the last four years, I've been in and out of hospital, you know, been having to postpone work for a little while and as a PT uh, a few years back, it's a, it's a pretty hard thing to do. But everything's, everything seems to be all right now. The, the, the way it looks is my jaw isn't sitting the way it should. So I've got a big underbite and it's slowly going to keep shifting back. So there's going to be a point uh, in the next few years where I'll need to realign the jaw. That's just the way that the body heals, I suppose. And then there might be a few issues with my teeth as well, because now I can only chew on one side of my mouth. The other side of the mouth isn't getting any stimulus. So there might be an issue with the teeth that aren't getting any any jaw work. But thankfully, um, and the people at the Peter McCullum Cancer Center are incredible people. Uh, and what they do is a, a real blessing. Everything seems to be all right with uh, with the cancer side of things. So I've, I've, I've had my checkups, had my, my monthly, my weekly, my, my three monthly, my, my half yearly, my yearly. And they said, yep, you're, you're good to go. If anything happens, come see us, which is wonderful. But the, the, the hard thing to get my head around is that the prognosis of neurofibromatosis is very varied of the person. A lot of people who have this type of neurofibromatosis is quite prevalent because they grow a lot, of, a lot of lumps on under their skin, on their nerves. On my, nerves. Yeah. So a neuro, nerves, fibromatosis, yeah. growths, I think it means. But um, mine's a bit different. Whether it's more severe or less severe, I'm, uns- I'm unsure. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's less severe, but the, the potential for growing these lumps is still there. And it seems to happen when people get a bit older, so in their, in their 40s to 50s to 60s, they'll start to grow these lumps more uh, more frequently. And uh, one of the doctors said, and they enlighten it to the elephant man disease. So when, when you hit a certain age, you know, they might grow to your detriment, but it's, it's very hard to, to dwell on that. And it's very inefficient to dwell on that. But, but that's a sort of the, the main prognosis I've got to get my head around. I'm also very aware that my lower legs are, are degenerating. So the nerve and the feeling in them is getting worse. So there, you know, there might come a point where, you know, something might happen with my foot where I'll need some extra assistance or, but that's sort of a, a future bar thing to worry about. And as far as I'm aware, and as far as of what I've read, I'm in the right industry to, to stop that from happening. You know, the, the effects are very targeted strength training, especially in, in neural training will help me out incredibly. And so in, in that sense, I'm in quite a good position to, to, to stave off the effects of, of what might come in the next few years. So it's been a pretty, pretty good journey. But as I said, I think I'm rather lucky. I've experienced things. I've felt things. I've seen things that <coughs> not a lot of people get to see, feel or hear. And because of that, I see things in a very different way. And it's, it's a real advantage to me. And it's a real, it's a real advantage for me in the fitness industry as well. Because all of a sudden, the Bart before the operation, who was worried about how many sets I should do on my pecs and and uh, you know how much protein I should have after my workout, all that sort of stuff. Although it has a place, isn't the big rock. Like we're we're trying to move a mountain here, and the boulders we need to hit uh, are well beyond that sort of stuff. You know, they're they're pebbles. And so this idea of uh, and and seeing it and witnessing it over the last sort of seven years and seeing how my body has responded to adversity, radiation therapy, operations like uh, ulcers at one point my mouth was littered with ulcers and how my body compensated for that. Seeing how the body responds to applied stimulus is something that everyone deserves to understand. It's It goes beyond trying to lose weight. It goes beyond trying to, to gain muscle. It goes, well, if I want to feel this way, I know exactly how I need to train. I know exactly how I need to eat to make sure I get there. And we've muddied the waters. I love the industry. I, I really do. But I do think we're getting further away from trying to specify these big boulders and a lot of health practitioners, a lot of PTs, they're promoting this already, which is which is excellent. But everything comes back to you know your your, your four big pillars, which are exercise, nutrition, stress reduction, and sleep. I can't I can't tell you how beneficial really protecting my sleeping patterns has been for the last seven years. I'm a convert to blue blocker glasses. I I wear them every night before bed, and they have a 
a very big effect on, on how I sleep. I have a very similar sleep routine. Uh, I go to bed at 8 o'clock. I wake up at 4 o'clock. Simple as that. There's the eight hours and I stick to that. But that has been the biggest progression for me. Uh, I'm sure it's had a big impact on how I've healed as well. Can we but, step back a little bit on that progression? Leading into this, you, the fitness industry saved you, you just said, like it was the thing that got you from where you were as angry 23-year-old but mm-hmm. to humanity talking about vulnerability and changing the world with fitness. What was it that made you grab on fitness back at that stage as that thing that can make that change? Because that's a powerful motivator. Like a lot of people who suffer anxiety and mental stress walk away from fitness Mm -hmm. because it is two things. If you're at that high end, it's too hard because you're playing in a game where there is no perfection. The other side of it is it's way easier to sit on the couch and turn on TV and watch Netflix or something. Mm -hmm. Like what made you get up and start to do what you do? Like let's Mm -hmm. be honest, you're the head of fitness for Jess Australia, mate. Mm -hmm. What made you do that? In university. Yep. We studied a technique called the Alexander technique, and it's very woo woo. But uh, yes, it's very uh, it's not a burpee word, is it? Very crunchy. No, it's uh, not yet. Anyway, <laughs> could it, be new jets word. That's right. <laughs> I don't know how many people use that word. I'm pretty sure it's just me. But anyway, the Alexander technique is wonderful. It teaches you how to it teaches the, the relationship between your breath, your posture, your resonance, and how you can exactly oh, right Alexander <laughs> technique. Bob Lush Fla. It's um it, it teaches you how all these things work uh, in synergy in in this in this sense to make you sound better look better perceive better to communicate better on stage and so i was fascinated by the fact of doing you know a couple of hours of this technique every week made me feel incredible and it all came to do with you know, it all came back down to the breath you know it was, it was very all about controlled breathing and certain breathing sequences and, and plosive sounds off breath and holding vowels off breath and that kind of got my my cogs turning you know and then the next sort of step into that joined the gym because of the vanity Uh, I wanted to be a better actor and I knew that I'm going to get more roles if I was a bit bigger and if I was a bit if I looked the part more and then all of a sudden the link between what we did in the Alexander Technique what we did at university and what we did and what I did in the gym merged and how breathing informed repetitions and repetition informed breathing and and how these systems are seemingly separate but utterly connected at the same time and that's where the cog started I consider myself a lifelong learner uh, even before the operation, even before everything. And so I, I did a lot of research by myself. I even got my certs and everything sort of started making sense. But it wasn't until the operation, it wasn't until that point that I, I realized that this thing that is our body is one beautiful system and it responds to adaptation in very specific ways. And mastering and understanding how to apply these adaptations and how to apply the stimulus to, to create these adaptations is just the most fascinating thing to me. I love the fact that you can you can do a bicep curl and it'll grow your muscle or you could do a row and it'll grow the same muscle arguably even more and why is a compound movement arguably going to grow more muscle than an isolation movement that sort of juxtaposition even though that might be, not be the most succinct way of explaining it that sort of idea and that sort of concept is something that, that fascinated me and it all stems back to university it all stems back to coming back to the breath and it all stems back to, to doing something that I really loved which at the time was acting wow so your three months months reco- three years recovery back to hospital for three years after all this yeah. so you're sitting down working on breathing techniques to manage your anxiety yes you're just sitting thinking i want to i want to train people i want to be a pt again and that's what got you off the bed mm, it helped it, it helped a lot and I, it, that's always sort of been a driver for me like uh, everyone uh, everyone tries to find their why and I often do the five why exercise and it always comes back to keeping people away from where I was and letting them know that that they have control of their body and the body is one of the most amazing adaptive systems in the world I think make your legend that's all I'm going to say you are an absolute legend so let's talk about the people that employ you let's talk about Jet <laughs> wonderful I mean, people wonderful people a, a, let, let's be honest it's it's a tough gig employing people and you can take a massive risk with someone who like if I was reading a resume I you know as a typical business owner you go oh okay well this could happen this could happen that could happen mm-hmm. Mate, why, why did jets put you in as their head of fitness it was perfect timing and yeah. you, you could call it serendipity in a sense mm-hmm. we moved we moved to the coast the sunshine coast because that's that's where we want to be that's where we want to establish ourselves and it just so happens that we being you uh, me and my partner yep. yes and it just so happens that jets was looking for a role a position that that went beyond the previous one so the previous one was looking after uh, our high intensity group exercise offering j series uh, and doing a bit of fitness consultation with the marketing team that sort 
sort of stuff. But they needed someone who had this perception and this this passion to to create new offerings and to to reshape things so that they so that they can continue with this quest of being the, the world's most loved training gym. So let's just talk a little bit about you. You've been a CrossFit coach. I have. You have you cycle instructor. Yes. What's that? A cycle cycle instructor. Yeah. Like a spin instructor. Spin class. Okay. Yeah, cool. Mate, I thought was, you might have taken people on bike rides. Sorry, oh, I, I loved it. That's uh, yeah, not quite, mate. You've done quite. the PT, the fitness manager. You've been at F45 uh-huh. and head of fitness for Jets. Correct. So 23, 28 now, mm. three years of back to hospital over and over again, and you've mm-hmm. still done all that. Yes. Man, you're- Either that or I'm just a, I want to, I want to do everything all at once. Yeah, you know what I mean? Well, you definitely did that at 23. I'll give you that. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> That's amazing. But it gives you a great perception. I mean, like at the end of the day, we're all, no matter what brand you're working for, whether it's yourself or, or another, we're all in it for the same reason, yeah. right? If you don't it's, love it, don't do it. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So back to Jets, your, a part of your head of fitness for Jets is that you need to run things like the challenges, is that right? Yeah, correct, yeah. yes. So why would a Jets challenge be any different from anyone else's? So this, this is where I'm really lucky. This challenge, so we have a challenge coming up in February, on February 3rd. Let's throw a date out there. When is it? February the 3rd? February the 3rd. How do people sign up for your Jets challenge? jets.com.au slash eight dash week dash challenge or if you just like a long URL do you want to say that again because that's a ripper (laughs) www.jets.com.au slash eight dash week dash challenge or if you just google the old jets eight week challenge it'll it'll pop up there can you be a jets member to do that no 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 and in fact if you if if you go on now at the moment there's a zero dollar joining fee plus you'll get some uh, some extra goodies along with the membership if you do join up now and you'll get access to the challenge too I've been really lucky. I've had quite a bit of trust and quite a bit of... Um, Thrown at you? Uh, uh, yes, absolutely. So this challenge is a lot different to the ones we've had in the past. Okay. So we've recently partnered with Precision Nutrition. So in the next sort of 12, 24 months, you'll see... Are you kicking some goals? Oh, oh yeah, mate. It's, they're wonderful. And they're, it's, their values align with mine and align with Jets and align with a lot of others quite well, which is why we're, we only partner with the best. Yep. I'll put it that way. So we're taking their ethos and we're taking their behavior behavior change concepts into the challenge. So one thing I'm really passionate about is that fitness is a lifelong endeavor. And um, whenever I get a new PT client, it's all right, here's what we want to do in, in, in this time, but can you see yourself continuing this regime for the rest of your life? And often the answer is no. So we're trying to find ways that you know, that create behavior change that that uh, that inform choices and inform decisions outside of the challenge. So in this challenge you're not going to get a meal plan. Which you're not going to get a meal plan. You're not going to get a meal plan and the reason is we want our members and we want the people taking part of the challenge to take control of their eating and their nutrition and i can i can vouch for this firsthand when you understand what foods make you feel good what foods make you feel bad what foods make you perform better rather than someone just assuming these things the better off we're going to be you know that's a big thing you've touched on there people just assuming these things like a lot of people are miserable hate life and they don't realize it's choices mm. they're making outside of just mental mm-hmm. mental issues you know like it's it's that food and that lifestyle you're talking about and that belief that you can be more than what you are now that you know that's a big thing and that's that's a very hard thing for you to grab and roll out to mass population yeah, mate, i'm really interested to hear how you're going to do that in this it's uh, it's huge it's very challenging but why else would we do it yeah i mean it is a challenge isn't it at the hey there he is i mean oh, at, i thought i said a burpee word there yeah, for a second i was <laughs> close <sweating. laughs> close <laughs> i'll lock them up mate it's, it's a real challenge and you know some some other people would see that challenge and just go oh that's okay we'll just give them a you know a shit hot meal plan and so good, some good exercises and, and and they'll be great within those eight weeks. So are you allowed to talk about how you're going to actually handle that side of things with the precision nutrition? Mm-hmm. Like what are you going to do? Is it people lock into columns and styles or what are they, how, how, do, how do you do this eight week challenge and not have a meal plan? Yes. So I, I can drop a few hints. I can't yeah. give away everything yeah, I get at all. That, if, um, if they want to know more, they'll have to, have to join. Join the, guys, join, 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 join. We, we feed in the behaviors week by week. And so yeah. there's a lot of information. In fact, we've used uh, we used Harriet's a few of Harriet's articles quite a bit about milk. She goes all right, Harriet. She's she's all right. So we, we've informed the processes. So mm-hmm. we we understand that we need to we need food preparation. It's a process. Now. Yes, I mean, yeah, absolutely, mate. Yeah. We, so they know they'll understand the, the benefits of, of meal preparation, the benefits of preparing your meals. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Not pre- not preparing, preparing to fail. And then they do this really cool thing that's linked into precision nutrition, where they get portion sizes, and uh, and these portion sizes then inform that gives them a target for the day and then a target for your meals. So a member comes in and goes, all right, I need you know two palms of protein, one cupped handful of carbohydrate, and a thumb of fat in every meal. And yep. I know I'm going to have four 
meals a day. All I have to do is do that for four meals, and I'll be I'll be doing something right. Yeah. So this Fly is by scales. Yeah, exactly right. Can't yeah, can't carry them. Around. Scales in a restaurant. That's very true. <laughs> Although some restaurants are. Yeah. But this is this is a habit, and this is a thing. Our hands are with us all all the time. Yep. Uh, this is a habit, and this is the thing that we can carry into into life. And it's not just eight weeks at a time. Well, we can we can have this ethos, and we can understand if we go to a restaurant and see a steak that's four palm sizes and a bowl of chips that's you know twice as big as your head that maybe I will portion it differently and then at the end of the day you'll be better off. This is just one example of how we're sort of tying this in into the challenge. It's setting up systems, uh, it's informing the systems, but then it's putting a bit of onus back on the member. One thing that's really interesting. Did you just say are you allowed to say we're member? Yes. Okay. Oh great. thank God, mate. That's you can right. give me a heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. I could do the burpee with you. <laughs> and so, and this is one thing we're taking in the J series as well. Our, our group what exercise. What do you want to tell people J series is before? Yeah. We, yeah. So J series uh, is within sixty odd of the Jets clubs. They're not in all of them just yet. It's hit training, programmed by myself, but delivered by some of the best rock star coaches you'll ever see. And so, one, you'll get super fit in thirty minutes at a time. Two, you'll have a hell of a lot of fun. Yeah. I mean, the the people that I train, that's why I train the, the coaches are other. Worldly, like yeah. the, the care and attention they have is, is and incredible. that's why there's 60 not what have you got 200 odd jets yeah with within australia that's so it's very selective at the moment it is it, it, out? it yeah. is at the moment and um how do i find a j series jets absolutely if you jump on our website all the information will be there for you and okay. if, you, if you click the j series link you'll get a bit more of a rundown of what that is and that's jets.com.au nailed it all in one but it's a, it's a beautiful offering and it creates a community like like i've never seen and the beautiful thing is the one thing i love about j series put the challenge aside for a second is that and this goes into this ethos of integrated training is that you have you've you can do your two or three j series sessions a week which is all we all we recommend yep. like if you look at all the literature and hit really yep. sessions should last between four and and, and ten minutes yep. and, and that's it so we recommend two or three times uh, times a week but then all of a sudden you have an entire gym to do your traditional strength training program which we're encouraging to be your, the foundation yep. and uh and you can come and do that whenever you want so you're getting the best of both worlds you're looking at different energy systems and you're looking at integrating them in a way that works for you rather than against you. It's a it's a wonderful offering. Do a bit of research, have a look at it. J series will Are play. they going to get better results than the non J series gyms, mate? From from the last challenge, yeah. yes. Is that right? Uh, if, if I wish people could see what I see sometimes in terms of the the results we're getting and uh, the gyms that do do J series see an incredible spike in results, but also uh, happiness. Yeah. It's it's humanity. They're coming together and they're exercising together. They're bonding through adversity. There's something about throwing down with other people. Mate, I, yeah. I love it and it's just uh, we're, so we're releasing a whole new set of workouts with J-Series on, on February 3rd as well so when the challenge oh, starts oh part of it yeah so. absolutely and the Saturday session I can't say too much about it but it's just mate, people it's, could see your eyes right now it's, it's non-stop it's, it's beautiful it's, yeah. uh, it's wonderful so I've been doing a few of those sessions in the week and they're, they're, they're bloody hard but they're a lot of fun so that's something to look forward to as well but yeah J-Series clubs that, that do the 8 week challenge they do see an incredible uh, incredible spike in results but that's, that's n- not to say that the clubs that don't have it do the same as well like there's there's some wonderful coaches out there that, that help run the challenge uh, and I've seen a whole lot of great deadlifting workshops and powerlifting workshops and they're approaching the challenge from a, from a different point of view um, but if you, if you sign up to the challenge you get access to our portal uh, in that portal is uh, all of the workouts and the way we're doing the challenge this year is it's quite phased so weeks one to three phase one weeks four to six phase two and then phase three is the last two weeks weeks seven and eight and so each of these has a different adaptation focus so the strength sessions in phase one very foundational and very traditional so we're low repetition and a lot of rest that's how we build strength that's how we build our foundation and the strength sessions throughout the challenge then we layer on a bit more volume there's some uh, strong man inspired workouts in phase two which are uh, that'll make Harrod happy yes <laughs> he'll have a lot of fun and she would call it strong person just so you know of course you know what? I'll, I'll change it in the guide <laughs> true very true and then phase three a little bit more volume and uh, and then we've in in the guide, I've added a little deload week as well, so they can transition back into, into real life and, and an appropriate amount of, of exercise rather than the the six seven sessions a week that some members do for in, in a challenge. So it's phased in that sense, but so you, you get an idea of what the workouts are. You get a bit of an expo- explanation from me of what the workouts are themselves. Uh, you're informed on different energy system targets in your cardio, so it's not just you know, balls okay. to the wall every Can't time. Just go in there like let's 
do this to a plane. Uh, mate, you'd know about this. You're, you're running a marathon, but the beauty of aerobic training is is wonderful. Uh, so I just joke a little bit there. <laughs> and the importance of aerobic training is wonderful as well. And the, the hard thing about aerobic training is that it's not sexy. It's very hard to sell, run for 30 minutes uh, at a heart rate of 140. You know, that doesn't translate to the market very well. It's easy for me. I get to 140 quite quickly. <laughs> Mine's keeping it uh, under 160. Give it a couple of weeks, mate. Yeah. Give it a couple of weeks. So you're informed a little bit about different energy systems in your cardio, so you can you can tailor the your weeks to themselves. So you have all of these resources. You have your, your recommendations of strength training sessions a week, your recommendations of cardio trainings a week. And if you're a J-Series member, it's as simple as turning up and, and doing the sessions, yeah. which is super easy. But in there as well, you know, we talk about macronutrients because we do understand that some of our members don't know what, what protein is, doesn't know what carbohydrate is. So we, we delve deeper into that. No, I actually bit. did a talk the other day and I think you and I were talking about this earlier and it might have been you that said it actually the same thing happened like what, what's your favourite carbohydrate chicken you know like <laughs> okay yep but that's that's. I mean that's the great thing that Jess is doing that anyone can start this challenge and at the end of it understand not only like that extensive training program mm-hmm. we were just talking about also how to eat when I'm away how to eat when mm-hmm. I'm home how to meal plan you know it's meal planning would be way easier if you're using handful methods versus on Absolutely. Weighing, weighing that because you've got your people like Claire my EA, who loves weighing everything she does and you've got people like me like I'm just not going to weigh stuff but then again mm-hmm. differences in body types and looks too just quite but <laughs> it's it's theories like and I haven't heard that theory before mm. like that's a really in, in a challenge mm. I think that's a real what you guys are doing here is revolutionary it's good yeah and you've uh, you've bitten off a big hunk of pie though uh, mate, yes. Uh, we've you know we have a fair a fair bit of issue with change too because people don't like change they like don't. internally. That would mate, be a, that's a tough gig for you, wouldn't it? It is, and you, you do get a lot of kickback, but it's and this is, this is technology as well. You know, people uh, now have a platform where they can access you anytime, and the way you read it might not be the intention or, or, on the way they want to say it. But you're right, people are, are reluctant to change. But as I said at the start, this industry is changing. Our bodies are the most adaptive and, and complex things that have ever been, and and if if we don't look to try and do different things to make the, the process more efficient or better or f- even work for some people where we're putting ourselves behind the eight ball you know you'll, you'll, you'll get a bit of kickback every now and then but I always think of you know uh, the rapper The Game so he's got a wonderful line in one of his songs and it says if you ain't got haters your shit ain't popping and <laughs> and, and I love that it's a t-shirt if you like. <laughs> yeah it is and, and, it, but it's, and it's very true as well and what we're trying to do over the next few years with Jets is, is really brave and and, and we're proud to do that and we're, we're proud to be that. And if we don't start trying to do things and, you know, it might fail miserably and that's okay, we'll, we'll learn from it. But if we don't try, we're doing a disservice to our members and we're doing a disservice to to humanity. We, we're here to get them healthier. We're here to get them fitter. And we know and we know what we're doing at the moment probably isn't working for most of the world. Obesity rates are going through the roof, yeah, you know, absolutely. heart disease, the whole lot. And doing something different might not work. It might work. But by golly, we're going to do it to the best of our ability and find out. Oh, mate, I congratulate you and Jets on, on these theories that are solid, like it's good. Thanks, mate. Way different to what I thought the challenge was going to be about, to be really honest. Yes. Let's talk about the, the challenge and Gold Coast Girl won the last one, is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Crystal from Ashmore. Yeah. And uh, why did she win? What, what, what were you looking for as far as what's a challenge winner look like? So a number of things. Uh, at the moment, we're, we're looking at total weight loss yep. as a metric, but we're also looking at uh, circumference as well because we understand and we're not at the point yet where we can see someone biomarkers and their bloods and their, and we can't get a consistent gauge of someone's body fat percentage over time yet. So we're looking at the circumference of, of, of body parts, total weight lost, and then we, we aggregate that data uh, and it gives us a pretty accurate depiction on, on you know who's done the best, uh, what percentage of change has this one done. So at the moment, that's the way it's judged. My dream, uh, and I think we're, we're a little bit off just yet, and I think the industry is a little bit off yet, but why not be ambitious, is that at the end of a, a challenge or whatever, you can have someone's total weight loss you can see their muscle gain which I know there's body scanners that can yeah. inform this sort of stuff so you can see their weight loss you can see their muscle gain but you can also see their their VO2 max increase and all of a sudden you can see their aerobic threshold increase the important things. yeah they're really important things and that sort of stuff those performance metrics inform everything else and in the years to come you'll see the challenge change and you'll start to see a big focus on weight loss 
we understand that, but an even more of a focus on holistic health and change. We're a little bit off that, and we, we need we need to have a look at a few technologies and uh, partner with some people to to really get a hold of that. But for the moment, that's a, that's how we're uh, we're looking at at the challenge. One thing that's uh, that I love, and I think the best thing that's come from the challenge is just the little stories you hear and the things that happened in what we call club land. I work in the support office, and sometimes it's I really miss it. Sometimes it's it's hard to, to notice what's happening on the floor, but that's where we, we contact our, our club managers and say, what's going on? Tell us the stories. But these little stories that come from the challenge and it's these stories that, that happen within club that even though on the surface might not be the biggest change in someone's life, objectively, it makes a, a big impact to that person subjectively. Yeah. Like the stories I've heard about someone doing a pull-up, one pull-up, and they've always wanted to do it, never been able to never do it. Do and one. within that challenge, they, they did it. And some people can do 30 of them and, yeah. and to them, they might not seem much, but to that person, that means so much. Yeah. And and that's what I love. Those those sort of things are the things we need to we need to focus on and reward. We're a bit we're, we're a bit off that just yet, but man, we're working towards it. So the iconic Jets eight week challenge is mm-hmm. all about making twenty twenty your year. It is. It is. Now, epic workouts, habit changing nutrition, yes. transfer your body. You're obviously going to work hard on people's minds as well. Big time. You're going to set up systems that make it realistic that you can actually live life and mm-hmm. make these changes. Mm-hmm. But you've also got a chance for two people to go to Hawaii. Is that correct? Mate, how, how good is that? I might actually start it myself. <laughs> I love Hawaii. Hey, I'm a sucker. I'd probably get off the pizza for Hawaii. That's right. No, it's, it's, it's a wonderful trip. And, you know, Hawaii is not, not too far away, you know. And, like, I, like I, I love the idea of, of someone winning money and, and, uh, and winning things but as I get a bit older I'm slowly under understanding that experiences mean so much more than, than cash and and, and prizes it's about you know? experience. and you've had some experiences haven't you? oh mate yes absolutely have you got a website or anything that people can can talk more about you or learn more about your story do you have anything like that not not succinctly and and not yet we have a um we have an Instagram get it out there absolutely uh, verum performance v-e-r-u-m performance verum is Latin for true and not oh, bad eh snake picture in my head for some reason <laughs> then um, we're active to a sense but we're, but we're by no means enamored by by instagram but you like people can talk to us yep. through that which which is so you answer uh, dms yeah i try i try my best mate bulk of information about jet i wait it's a really exciting time like, uh, it's, it's incredible so what we're, we're launching a new website very soon uh, and with that comes a content hub and this is something that's really uh, massive fan of content hubs. oh mate and so you're gonna see a whole lot of information come out from jets very soon so keep an eye out for that the best thing the best thing people can do to keep up with how Jets is rolling and how we're changing is to Instagram, social media, follow us on, on, on all of them. Jets Australia on Facebook and Instagram. Jets Australia, no underscores, just straight up Jets Australia. Jets Australia. So anyone considering or listening to this and thinking, you know what, I wouldn't mind making a change in, when was it? February? February 3rd. February the 3rd. Get on board, jets.com.au. And man, I'm really excited about hearing you guys are creating this ecosystem of health, fitness, knowledge, nutrition, mental health. That, that's gold. Like the more that we as an industry talk about that stuff, the better the people around it will be. Oh, mate, it's and as I, as I said, like if, if you're here to make people healthier and make people happier, we have to start talking about this stuff and we have to start doing this sort of stuff. And it's it's my vocation to make sure that we do it in the right way and affect as many people as possible. And if somebody loves a jet story and wants to become a Jets PT, how do they con- who do they contact? Will they jump on the Jets website again? And is that how they apply the, for jobs? The, as a PT? the best the best way to do it is to contact the club directly. Go to your local club. Yeah, absolutely. There's one one thing that's on my radar this year is to affect uh, and impact uh, our PT network uh, at the moment they work as contractors within our gym but they are by no means uh, not within the culture they they coming from a PT background I understand the, the plights and uh, and and the struggles and and the impact they can have and, and one one thing I'm really passionate about is making your jets PT better financially and business wise but also making the impact a lot better as well so 2020 is a year to start for me to start rolling that out as well it's easy to forget about them and uh, i know exactly what that feels like but again we're all in it for the right reasons and every jets pt has another jets pt by their side but they just don't see them day to day so contact the clubs directly it's the as is the industry it's always having the feelers out there for for good pts i think that's the one thing to really look forward to if you are a jets pt or 
uh, or you're considering to be a Jets PT, is that we are going to put a bit of an onus on you, you know, in, in the next few months and years. So Lots of change. Yes. Yes. Sleepless very... nights coming up again. Yeah, that's right, mate. Yeah, lucky you focus on sleep. Wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> eh? Thanks for coming on board, mate. You're no, one of the true mate. legends, and I really appreciate uh, you sharing your story about Jets because, you know, that's an iconic brand in Australia, but mm-hmm. about you, like your story and getting out there. And, like, I just love when I talk to people, I think, the fuck got them off their bed do you know what I mean what made them get up and do what they got to do and sorry for swearing all those people who you <laughs> swear mum if you're listening but I just want to say thanks for coming on board I think a lot of people are going to want to talk to you beautiful come at me games on Jets challenge eight weeks February the third third make sure you register before that date because that's when it starts you got it jets.com.au forward slash a whole lot of stuff like number eight dash we dash challenge IT people that make these <laughs> URLs seriously <laughs> <laughs> Get on board or jump on the NC and um, have a chat with someone or go see your local Jets. Absolutely. Get in touch. Game over. Thanks for coming on board. Pleasure, mate. Today's podcast was brought to you by our partners in Fit, Happy and Healthy, ASN, Nutrition Warehouse, DY Discount Vitamins, Fat Burners Only, Evelyn Fay, Mr. Supplement, or find a retailer online at bodyscience.com.au forward slash retailers.